that didn't understand how important uh, the civil rights movement uh, was and still is. Yes, yes. And uh, even due uh, to that, uh, many of us, no matter what our situation is now, many of us have been uh, beneficiary of the sacrifices that these great men did in order for us uh, to move forward in this country uh, filled with violence and hatred and racism. And don't you be fooled. Don't, don't sit there like Alice in Wonderland and think that racism is over. It is a live Jim Crow. It's just taking on a different form. And we have to be uh, are willing to roll up our sleeves again, uh, put our shoulders to the wheel again, and we have to teach this next generation, uh, you didn't get all this and get here uh, by happen chance, somebody prayed, the church was the epicenter and the focal ground for the civil rights movement. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. And it is important that they learn how important it was for those many people that sacrificed and gave their lives. There are people that died of a lot of blood that was shed in order that this generation can have all these wonderful and marvelous little gadgets and toys and, and things uh, that they feel they're entitled to. And, and what bothers me more than anything, uh, uh, Bishop, God bless you this morning, is the fact that those people did more with less. They didn't have social media, but they got the message out. They didn't have the ability to text message, but they got the message out. They didn't have cell phones, but they got the message out. They didn't have a lot of these things that we have access to and won't use them for uh, anything other than foolishness. Amen. Uh, uh, that generation was tough skin. Amen. They were tough skin. As my mother used to say, uh, I'm a tough piece of leather, but I'm well put together. And, 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 and you're talking about talked about. They were talked about, abused, scorned, laughed at, humiliated, but they kept on pressing because they kept their eyes on the prize. So we want to recognize and thank God for the work that late Dr. Uh, uh, Clay Evans has done praying for his five children and his wife and his family there in Chicago. Uh, and, but thank God that we do have, uh, the, one of the good things about YouTube is you can go back and pick up some of the old songs. And I, and I started listening to uh, uh, some of the Reverend Clay Evans songs uh, uh, reach beyond the break. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. We start looking at it when your rope seems like it's broken. Uh, don't reach where it's broke, but just reach beyond. Oh, come on, son. Just right beyond where it is broken. And God uh, will sustain you. Uh, uh, I made it. I mean, there's so many wonderful uh, songs that Reverend A. Uh, Evans had sung in his life and career in the singing ministry. Uh, and we never want to forget it. the bridges that brought us over. Amen. Amen. That's part of our history and part of our legacy. So we thank God uh, for him on today. All right. Uh, choir, y'all ready? All right, we got our choir. I got to see a new uh, organist in here. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. He's tinkling the keys quite nicely. Amen. So, I think we're going to read. That's right. That's right. I got that old one. I remember some stuff. All right. Let's give the great, uh, the Cedar Grove choir a hand as they come.
through. Thank you for allowing us and giving us the privilege to be here on today. And many that have started out the year no longer with us, but you've allowed us grace and mercy and help and strength. Roll on just a little while longer. We are grateful. Uh, thank you for Thanksgiving. But every day is a day of Thanksgiving. Thank you for 
Queen the East, thank you for glowing on our man, the roof over our head. Thank you for supplying each and every one of our needs. And even Lord, every time that you bless us, we have something that we want. So we are thankful. We're 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 thankful. As you said, as a cheerful giver, a hilarious giver. And we ask that you take your blessing and break it and multiply it. Turn it a hundredfold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, take your hands to the ushers and give us some giving and singing and giving and giving and singing and singing and giving and giving and singing. Music. All right.
all they don't pick up the phone. No matter what day, no matter what time of night, no matter what the circumstance, he will answer prayer. Thank you so very much, choir. God bless you today as I pray. God bless each and every one of you here on this morning. I'd like to call your attention just for a little while in the book of Romans, chapter number one. Chapter number one, verses 15 and 16. Has uh, anyone checked on Sister Miro this week? Yes, yes, I talked to her on yesterday. All right, thank you so very much. She's fine. Amen. Amen. Paul writes to the church in Rome and says the following words. So as much as is in me, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes for the Jew first and also for the Greek for I'm not ashamed for I'm not ashamed for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Amen. If you don't mind looking at somebody and smile on this first Sunday in the month of December and tell them, neighbor, neighbor. give me the gospel. Give me the gospel. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Lord, we do thank you today. Forgive us of our sins and wash us, cleanse us, knowing us afresh. People will see more of thee and that's behind us behind the cross. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give me the gospel. Apostle Paul is writing to the Roman church, the Christians in Rome, and he's making a clear declaration concerning his steadfastness and his ability and his forwardness and being, as it were, unapologetic in his presentation of the gospel. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Understand that Rome was a very busy cultural city, a multicultural city, uh, full of different diverse ethnicities that had all come to Rome yeah because it was a cosmopolitan type city. Sure yes. Much of it like Los Angeles. Hallelujah. A melting pot. Mm -hmm. Or as some people would say, it was a city like Dumbo. A little bit of everything was in the pot. So you had Jews, you had Greek, and those that were of the empire, or the Roman Empire, all dwelling in one place. Yes, yes. I, I have learned to appreciate what Paul did, especially in Rome, because not only was there great diversity, there was also great opposition. Mm. Amen, amen. Because he's carrying the gospel. Mm. Many people feel that it's an easy job. It's easy work. And because you have a certain level of enthusiasm, you would anticipate and oftentimes hope that people would be receptive of your message. Amen, amen. Believe it or not, there are many challenges because people that are in this type of cultural experience don't like change. Because when the gospel, when the gospel comes 
It makes you take a close evaluation of who you are and of who you are. Yes, yes. And now you tell them and bring in people again, Jews, that have been used to and have been cultured in Mosaic law. Now they have to take on a whole new way of thinking. Let this mind be in you. Yeah. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Now we're looking at a group of people that have to understand bullocks and doves and goats and rams. All of those were good under the law, but in the law that it was weak, it was not enough to atone man from their sin. So Jesus came down. Yeah, yeah. Forty-two generations and, and gave his life that we could live abundantly. Yes, yes. The gospel. What is the gospel? Well, the gospel is the death, tell us, tell us. burial, yes, sir. and the resurrection yes, yes. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Give me in 2019 the gospel. Yes, right. yes. Yes, right. uh, why do you say that? Because Somewhere in the last 25 years, we have gotten off yes. the gospel message. Oh yes, we've gotten off the gospel message. Uh, uh, there, there are more motivational talkers yes, yes, yes. and people that are motivationally teaching, but they're not teaching the gospel. Don't motivate me, give me the gospel. Because if you give me the gospel, the gospel has enough power in it to motivate me to go from here to there just by preaching the gospel. Uh, we, 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 we become lulled into a, 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 a time in which we used to have, we used to have people that no matter where you were, you could be in the grocery store, you wouldn't be ashamed to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. On your job, you wouldn't be afraid to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, the gospel would be so rich and deep down in you, you oftentimes didn't have to say nothing. People would say uh, uh, they, they have a Nicodemus type experience with you. They wait privately and talk to you, or maybe on the lunch break of passion and say, Something's different about you. You do not like everybody else, but, but now we've gotten so comfortable because we're not preaching the gospel. We're preaching prosperity, but we're not preaching the gospel. Whatever you do, wherever you go, you ought to be willing to say, I am a child of God. For God I live, and for God I live. Give me the gospel. Don't, 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 don't sugarcoat it. Give, give me the gospel. Some, some, of, some of us have forgotten the fact that hell is still real. Amen, amen, no amen, amen. We, 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 We've taken on this false gospel where there are people that are saying God is so nice and God is so loving and God is so kind and God would not create no place to put us. Well, I, I beg to differ with you. Even the Bible says in the book of Revelation that hell has enlarged itself. Huh? Hell is making room for folk that don't want to follow and obey the gospel. You can, you, can, you, can, you can sit back if you want to and get fooled by these people. But even Jesus said, in that day, many will come saying that I am the Christ. Believe not a one. There's a whole lot of folk that's shimming and shaking and hucking and bucking and tricking and trucking. They are not giving us the gospel. And, and, and this is what is going to save us is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Paul said, I, I, I come to tell you something. I, I, all that's in me, I'm ready. I'm ready. I, I came ready. I know what I'm getting ready to go against, but I'm ready to preach the gospel. I, 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 all in all, 
all is in here, let, let's sit down and have a fireside chat. I, I want to tell y'all something. It ain't about Rome. It ain't about Israel. It's about the gospel of Jesus Christ. You got to understand. You got to understand and know, Rome, that you have somebody that you call an emperor. But we have the king of kings and the lord of lords. And his name is Jesus. Because one Friday evening, they took him on a hill called Golgotha. And they hung him high and they stretched him wide. They dropped him low. He dropped his head into the locks of his shoulder. And he said, it is finished. But it started and ended there. On three days, he got up with all. In his hand. That's the gospel. I, I come to tell you. I come to tell you, Caesar is going to die. But the God that I serve, the king that I serve, he's living again. As the songwriter said, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he's living no matter what men may say. I see his hand of mercy and I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time that I need him. He's always here. And he lives. And that's the gospel. That's the, that's the gospel. I may not ever drive a Rolls Royce, but I got something better than a Rolls Royce today. A Rolls Royce is nice, but it'll, it'll break down on you. And you got to take it in the shop for repair. But one thing about the gospel, all I have to do is a songwriter said, fire! I stretch my hands to thee. No other help do I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, where shall I go? And I didn't have to pay for that. All I have to do, he said, uh, if you come boldly to the throne of grace, you can get grace and mercy in the time of need. Didn't cost you a dime at all. Cost you some time, but it didn't cost you a dime. That's the gospel. Uh, the gospel will save you from the gutter to the uttermost. Somebody ought to look at your neighbor and say, give me the gospel today. Ah, oh, he says, he says, I want you to know I'm not ashamed of this either. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. It used to be church folk would walk and you could see them with their Bible. You knew where they was going. On first Sunday, you could see them in their white. You knew where they was going. Sometimes I mean, you can say what you want to say. Uh, you can dress up for any occasion, but folk don't want to dress up for church. Talking about the Lord said, "Come as you are." But well, I, I like to show off what I am. I like for the world to know. Yeah, I am a child of the King. I, uh, when Prince Harry goes out, he knows who he is. He dresses the part. When the other brother goes out, he dresses the part. When the queen goes out, she dresses the part because she knows she's royalty. And I'm part of a royal family. I said, I'm part of a royal family. I've been wrapped in by the blood of Jesus Christ. People need the gospel today. I said, people need the gospel today. We need the gospel today. We need the gospel to stay on track. We need the gospel to let a dying world know that there is a God who sits high but looks low. The songwriter said his eye is on the sparrow and I know he's watching me. I'm so glad that the Lord sent his angel to watch over me day and night. But I'm so glad for the gospel. I'm so glad that his blood can still wash away my sin. For what can wash away my sin? What can make me whole again? Before Jesus left this earth, he said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You better tell the devil that I'm a child of God. Tell your family I'm a child of God. Tell your co worker I'm a child of God. When you go into the bank, let the bank know. Tell the Lord, thank you for being your child. I 
and they that dwell therein. I can look and get the gospel. His death, his burial, and his resurrection. People want to know how to do something? Tell them Jesus died for your sake. He was buried, but he rose again. That's the gospel. The fact that we know that he got up, he didn't stay there. I'm not knocking nobody in your belief, but if you go over to China, Buddha's still there. If you go down into Egypt, go to the Mecca, Muhammad is still there. But if you travel over to a little place in Israel, the stone is still rolled back. You can walk down in there and look. It is vacant. Because he said in three days you can destroy this temple. But I'm going to pick it back up. Buddha had not picked it up. Confucius didn't pick it up. Muhammad didn't pick it up. But Jesus picked it up. Bow your heads. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you today for the gospel. The late Andre Crouch penned the words and said, For we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth shall be damned. All you have to do is come by belief. Yeah, yeah. Believe that he crucified, buried, and raised from the dead. Yeah, yeah. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God yeah. unto salvation. To everyone that believes it, to everyone that receives it,
Paul wrote to the church of Corinth and told them uh, the same night that Jesus was betrayed that he uh, took his disciples up to the upper room he girded himself with a towel with a basin of water he washed every one of his disciples' feet and they didn't understand the humility and humanity of what Jesus was doing and he told them as an example to do it as often time in remembrance of him, of his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And today, as this is the last yeah. first Sunday of 2019, the last first Sunday of 2019, thank God we made it. There's been some good days, there's been some difficult days. There's been some loss of loved ones. There's been loss of those that were near. People have lost homes, lost jobs. But thank God that you didn't, none of those things caused you to lose your salvation. Solomon said at the time and the season for all things Ecclesiastes 3 gives us a list and there's some things that we're going to lose and there are things that we're going to gain and there's a time and a season of sowing and a time of reaping it's the winter time but it also can be your harvest time. Don't let the conditions of the world limit your responsibility and your love for the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we get ready to, to go to this table and receive these sacraments, the blood and the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Let's never forget the sacrifice that was made. Greater love of no man than this. The man laid down his life for his friends. You may not have any or many earthly friends, but thank God that Jesus called you a friend. And he said he's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Yeah, yeah. So I thank God that he's my friend. Yeah. Bishop Darby was talking about our friends that he has taken to be with him. But Jesus still says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I'm thanking him today that he has been true to his word. He's never left, never forsaken. He's been that kind of friend. Father, in Jesus' name, we do thank you as we come to the table. Pray your blessings upon us that we never forget. The ultimate sacrifice you made on Calvary when you gave your life for us. Yes, yes. And as we take this supper, it is not a ritual, it is a symbolic representation of you giving your life on Calvary, your body that was broken for us, your blood that was shed for us. Let us never forget. Never forget Calvary and never forget your sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray.
uh, we can learn more and more and more about God's Word. Amen. Thank you so very much uh, for being with us. Uh, one of the founding members yeah. of Steve yeah. Rowe. Thank you so much for laying that brick down and that foundation so we can keep on stepping and go a little bit higher in the hand. I hope to see you again and again and again. God bless you. All right, God be with you. God be with you.